Sunday morning, Calvary Assembly of God in Springfield. Let's stand together. God bless you in the sanctuary, the balcony, the chapel, and online we welcome you. Let this be a great service this morning. Open your heart to Jesus. Let's worship. The song we're going to sing is a song we've sung so many times. But I don't want us to miss the truth in its words. That he is the everlasting God. Would you allow him to let you rise on wings like eagles? His strength will rise when we wait on him. And we need not grow weary. Would you let that encourage your heart this morning as we lift up our voice in worship and praise? Let's sing. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord.
Well, good morning and welcome to Calvary this morning. Oh, how wonderful. Did you know that if you and I are overwhelmed, did you come to God's house overwhelmed this morning? Jesus said this. He said, if you willingly take my yoke upon you, then you'll find rest. Rest inside. I'm willing to give Jesus full control. Yes, his yoke. I can find rest. He says in Hebrews 4 that that rest means I stop doing my works, but I let Jesus have his way in me. He doesn't say that to restrain us. He says that so that we can have rest inside of our hearts. Let's pray together. Thank you, Jesus, that you understood that life could be overwhelming, Father. And all the voices of the world and all the things around us, oh God, can seem like a storm that never ends. But Jesus, you promised to be our dwelling place. And that if we take your yoke on us today, by our choice, we make you Lord, that we will begin to find rest within us, Lord. Your quietness and your confidence and the peace of God that will pass our understanding. And so we worship you this morning, Father, with all of our hearts because of the God you are. How we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome in this place, oh Lord. Let's sing, we've come. We've come to join the song. Sung long before our lives to raise our voice We've seen, we've seen your faithful hand, your mercy without end, the King who lived and died, a God who sat.
Unto you the saint and risen King, we lift our voice to heaven, singing worthy, Lord of all. Singing worthy, singing worthy, Lord of all. Singing worthy, singing worthy, Lord of all. Hallelujah, yes, Jesus. you take a moment to respond to God's word. If that was for you, would you come? Would you lay down whatever it is that God wants you to lay down? Would you let go and surrender whatever that is God wants you to surrender? Would you give him your whole heart? Would you worship with abandon, without a care in the world? Thank you, Jesus. Perfect love casts out all fear. His perfect love fills us to overflowing, that there's no room for fear, that we can approach his throne with boldness and grace. You're greater than our hearts, Lord. Highest praises are yours, Lord. Highest praises. Thank you, Jesus. Let's sing highest praises. surrender, Lord, as we sing.
as your God. Hallelujah. For I've given to you a mouth that you might learn to praise the Lord your God at all times. For who alone is worthy of my praise? I ask you today, is your idol worthy of your praise? Are the idols around you that you serve, that you invest in, worthy of your praise? Or is the Lord your God that created you, the Lord your God that made you, the Lord your God that knows you, the Lord your God that sees you, is he worthy of your praise? For you alone are my creation, that I have given a mouth, that you might lift up the name of the Lord that you might praise the name of the Lord. You are in my house as your God, and I have called you to praise the Lord. If you do not praise me in my house, how will you praise me elsewhere, says your God? Lift up a praise to the Lord your God for who he is, says your God. Look to him, says your God. Lift your eyes to him and focus on him and learn the victory of my praise, says your God, for my word is filled with victories that that came when my people first praised the Lord with their mouths, says your God. Let's respond with obedience. Would you out loud with your own words and with your mouth lift up a, a words of praise, shouts of praise. Hallelujah, you are worthy. Would you not be quiet in the face of the enemy? Would you declare to the darkness that we have victory? It's no longer we who live, but Christ in us. Hallelujah. The enemy thought he had us, but Jesus says that we are his. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're worthy. You're worthy. Jesus. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all. Be exalted. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all. Be exalted. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the you not to stay silent even if it's just saying the name of Jesus we let the spirit fill you with the desire and the passion to lift up his name would you thank our Lord out loud we enter your courts with praise your throne with thanksgiving Lord all of heaven We join all of heaven's song. 
As we stand praising Jesus, I just feel in my heart that if you have and if I have placed an idol as the leader of our affection, then you cannot ask God to move your mountains because who you worship is not God. So today, if you've been crying out for an answer, something in your life, an obstacle, and you're wondering where God is, I believe he says, am I your God? Or is that idol the one that you've placed at the forefront of your life? And you're crying out for me to move, but you really haven't placed me as your God. You just now, as we've heard over and over again, he's the only one worthy. He's the only one that can move things. Right now, would you just search your own heart and say, God, if I have a need, have I placed you at the forefront? Have I given you your rightful praise? Have I given you the submission that you demand and ask for? Right now, just across this place, just... By yourself, would you raise up your, your soul to Jesus and say, am I, am I listening to you? If I have an obstacle, have I praised you and given you rightful place in my own life? Jesus. As you just ask the Lord, this, this worship team up here is just going to sing that, how worthy he is. And you keep seeking God as this worship team sings. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve, you deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Deuteronomy 30, 
the leaders of Israel are speaking and they say, this thing that we've given you now to obey God is not too far from you. Yes. And it's not across the sea and it's not in heaven. No, nope. it is here for you to take. So that word that you just felt the Lord put in your heart as you sought him and say, God, what's that step you need me to take? Don't put it to the side. Don't say it's too much for me. No, he's given it to you. That's going to empower you to walk through with that thing. So take it seriously this week as the Lord uh, begins to lead you. And I just want to bear witness just before Justin started to say that that was exactly what was on my heart. You know, God never intended church to be something that we're just spectators to. Mm. Let me just Amen. watch and see what's going on. But God's church is a participating thing. And each of us in this place participate with God. Maybe there's a lot of visitors in this place today because of today's baptism. And you're like, what is going on in this place? Well, God's word is what we want to build the church upon. And his word explains and tells us that sometimes when we're praising the Lord, when we're gathered together, that in the word of God, in his church, someone will rise up and speak a word that is another tongue, another language that we don't know. And then another, by God's spirit, will speak those words and interpret them to those of us so that we might know what they're saying. And truthfully, it really means that God is in this place. God is here. And so whether you're a visitor and it's your first time or whether you're part of this congregation, I want to encourage you to participate, respond and say, Lord, this idol, this actual thing, I'm going to say it out loud to you. And so when I walk out of this place, I'm giving it, I've left it here and I'm going to begin to serve you. And it's in those times when we participate with the Lord, then we become changed people. And we are a living church on fire for the Lord. Amen. 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 Let's sing it one more. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Jesus. You Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why we gather in our church. That's why we're here, to worship him, to love him, so that ultimately we might serve him. And then, really, after that's all said and done, Lord, we spend eternity with you in heaven. So, Jesus, let this morning, the worship, the praise, the gifts of the Spirit, all help us, direct us, encourage us in the things of loving Jesus. Bless now, we pray. Thank you for each one, their participation. Thank you for sending your spirit. In Jesus' wonderful name, we pray and dedicate it all to you. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Good to see you this morning. We take this moment in the service, shake a hand and then sit down. Say hello to somebody and then sit down. Amen. Welcome online. We got some of your Texas. Good to see you all the way from South Carolina. Good to see you, Fog knows. May the Lord bless greatly. Amen. You may be seated. Just squish it. Nice full house. Good to see you all here. Thank you, Justin.
Hey, we had a great Easter, and it looks like we're having a great week after Easter, too. So God bless you. Somebody got the memo that church isn't only one day a year, but that it's every Sunday and, every, and a bunch of other services. But God bless you for being here. We welcome you. As Emily mentioned, we're going to guess that because of the baptism, there are many friends and family here. And what we ask you to do on those kind of occasions, if you're a guest at Calvary, is we ask you to fill out our visitor card, or what we call connection card. So Pat is going to be back at the table. There is a table out in our main foyer that has a poster over it like this. She'll have a card like this, ask you to fill it out for me. It comes to me, and she has a gift packet to give to you. So visitor, guests, welcome. Fill that out after service out in the main foyer and, and collect your gift. Hey, I want to tell you about something that goes on at Calvary, and something goes on almost every day of the week. But on a Wednesday night here at Calvary, it is maybe the best kept secret, at least from about half of you, that you're missing out on something really great on a Wednesday night. If you can't get here, get online. But if you can get here, all the better. We have adult Bible study right here in the sanctuary, and then two fantastic programs, Royal Rangers for the Boys, Girls Ministries for the Girls, takes place in our educational wing on the lower level, and some great things happen. So I don't know if you've been thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it, but hey, I would say do it. I would say come and participate. It is a great night to lift yourself and your children up in Jesus. Also, uh, I want to say thank you for all you who've been parking out on the road. I noticed extra people are parking out on the road. Thanks a lot. That's going to make a big difference, and we're going to keep it up, and we just trust that the momentum of this, uh, uh, of just whatever God is doing, uh, it continues to work, even to the point where we have to go to two services again, because I know the Lord will do some great things. Well, looking into this month of April, the ladies want you to sign up for their time together on the 19th, Friday the 19th. Friday the 19th, ladies, there's a sign up for it in the foyer, and they always have a nice meal, and they always have a great time together. There is child care, so that's important for you to know. They go from about 7 to 9, and it's a little bit of everything that night. It builds up the woman of God, helps her to be strengthened in the things of God. And then the next morning, we drag the guys out of bed, and we have breakfast for them. This month, I heard only rumors, mind you, only rumors, but there will be breakfast burritos. I, I tell you, they've really gone overboard. And Nutella crepes. Uh, man, what in the world? This is, what is this? I mean, this is a manly man. What's going on here? You know, I don't know what that's about. But anyway, I just want to take a moment and thank the good number of guys. There's about a dozen of them that come way early on Saturday morning and make this breakfast happen for the guys, they, they just start from scratch boy and, and uh, well, maybe not total scratch, but pretty scratch, and, and they really go to town, and I just wanna thank those guys. Thank you guys for what you do. Yeah, that's good, that's good. Hey, and finally, we uh, at Calvary, how do we take an offering? Well, uh, at least currently, I won't say we'll do this forever, but currently we simply put ushers at the back door after the service is over. And they have bags, and if, if you want to give an offering, you visitors, uh, we want to give you a pass on it this morning. Just thank you for coming. We didn't invite you to give an offering. We just invited you to be with us. But otherwise, if you're a regular, it's there. Or, as you know, many of you already know, there's an online option on our website where you simply go, and, and that's, that's today's world and how it works. So God bless you for your offering. Well, Pastor Josh, can I invite you to come up? Um, Pastor, you know, we did experience just a few moments ago some gifts of the Spirit. And uh, one of the things that I noticed was, uh, maybe f longer than our normal, is that we um, had three sets of tongues and interpretation, three sets. And I think the Word of God in 1 Corinthians, I know the Word of God in 1 Corinthians, the 13th, 14th chapter, talks to us about it being done decent and in order, but it also gives a limit to that. I'm just going to let you talk to that as you stand up here for a second and then jump right into your sermon. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Yes, God's Word is given to us not just to inspire us and, and to come underneath us and to comfort us, but to instruct us and to say, here's the guardrails, here's the guidelines, here's the way you should go. And, and God says that we should come in a place like this where God is being worshipped and expect the gifts of the Spirit to be there like we experienced. But we should also say... As, as he mentioned, 
that, God, what guidelines do you have? What, what boundaries do you have for that? And one of those boundaries is that God says in any given meeting, there should be a limit of two or three um, gifts of the Spirit, sets of the gifts of the Spirit. And so we experienced three this morning, which is God's perfect design for that limit to be. So thank you for not only being moved and lifted by the Spirit, but to say, Spirit, instruct me in the way that I should go. And as we do that, we honor our God who is all-powerful, but is also a God of design and order. Amen. Well, this morning I want to preach to you a message on this Baptism Sunday entitled, The Old is Gone, The New Has Come. The Old is Gone and the New Has Come. I'm excited to, to do it. But just before I do, I'm, I'm going to ask us to pray together. And as we pray, I want you to pray and thank God and rejoice for two things. Rejoice for His mighty works and rejoice for his mighty word, his works and his word. So as you bow, and I'm going to lead you in prayer, but would you thank him from your heart for those two things? Lord, thank you for your mighty works. Lord, thank you for what you've done in our lives for us. Thank you for what you've done for us on Good Friday and, and Easter and what you've done in our lives personally and what you continue to do. Thank you for moving this morning. You're a God who is active and working. We thank you. We rejoice in that. But Lord, just as much we rejoice in your word, that your ways and decrees and commands and law and guidelines are true for us today, that they're there and they're given to us, not just as a, a dead, archaic document, but as a living word speaking to us where we are at today through Jesus, through the Holy Spirit given by the Father. Thank you, Lord. We rejoice. We thank you as your people for your mighty works and your mighty word. Speak to us then today by your word as we speak about, Lord, this concept of old turning new. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, at the end of my message, Pastor B is going to come up here and he's going to call forward several individuals who are called our baptismal candidates. They're ones who are, who are going to stand here and up front and we are going to ask them if they receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, if they're committed to following Him, if they've made that decision. And then on, on that tank of water behind me, we are going to dunk them under the water and then bring them back up. Why would we do this? Why would we go through all this, soaking them, asking them to bring a change of clothes and a towel? Is it just kind of to, to make a show or a scene so we can kind of say, hey, we're doing something different? No really for two reasons that we're going to baptize them. First is because the Bible says it's a step of obedience to God's Word. God's Word says if you have received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, then in order to obey what He said, make that step of obedience of being baptized. And so to all you who are going to be baptized this morning, you are obeying Jesus and through obedience comes victory. But the second reason that we're going to put them under the water and bring them back up is because it's a powerful outward display of an inward reality. They have, in a private setting, they've said yes to Jesus, received Him in their heart, and now they are saying, I'm unashamed and I want to proclaim it publicly in an outward display that the old is gone and buried and the new me has come up again, like a burial and a resurrection. The Bible speaks about this truth of the old being gone and the new being, being arrived and come in many places. But, but I love this verse from Colossians chapter 3, 9 and 10, speaking to those who have received Jesus. You have left your old sinful life and the things you did before, and now you have begun to live the new life. And in this new life, you are being made new and the goal of it is for you and me as Christians to become like the one who made us. The old things are in the rearview mirror, and the highway that you and I are on is a new life. New. What a fascinating word, right? A new life, a new path, a, a fresh start. You know, there are people in this world who would say that's impossible. What you are is what you are. There's others who would say, oh, yeah, you can become new on your own, but they're, they're all missing it somewhere because the truth is becoming new, truly changing, casting off the old and adopting the new 
is something that isn't just an act of our will, but it's, it's a spiritual reality that we can't, well, we, we can't do on our own. We've got to look into God's Word and say, God, what do you have to say about it? Maybe you're here this morning <coughs> as a visitor. Maybe you're searching for the answer to that question, how could I really become new? How in the world could I make a fresh start? Maybe you're just here this morning curious. Maybe you were here last week and you, you heard Pastor B say something about the empty tomb and the empty heart and wasn't that a good message? Maybe it stirred you and you came back this week like, I'm curious, I want to learn more. And your question boils down to this, can a person really change? Can any of us really get a new life? Maybe you're here this morning and you do have a relationship with Jesus. You are on the highway of life, but there's that one area of your life, that one area. Maybe you don't talk about it with anyone, but you say, I'm stuck in a rut there. I don't think I'll ever change. I'm doomed to never improve. I want you to know that God is a God of newness. He's a God of new starts, not just of second chances, and then strike three, you're out. But he said, today my mercies are new. And so this message is for all of us, whether you're searching or curious or discouraged, no matter who you are, whatever you find yourself, whatever state you find yourself in, God's offer and promise still stands. Newness, freshness, renewal. So let's talk about that newness today from God's word in three simple points before we baptize these several. Number one, I want you to know this. Oh, I wish I could just take this and just put it on your heart and stick it there so you don't forget it this week. Only God can make us new. It's the most important truth. If we don't get it inside of our heart, we'll keep going on that wheel like a gerbil, just keep spinning, 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 trying, trying, trying. Only God. Not doctor this or specialist that, not money or education. Those things can help and modify and improve in their own way, but only God can make new. When you or I try to make something new, we're, we're kind of like, well, it's kind of like when your wife says to you, honey, we got to make this room new. And so you spend your whole Saturday afternoon just moving the couch here and the coffee table over there. And, and she stands back and goes, no, oh, back over there. And you go, okay. And by the time you're just done and everything's back in its old place again, because that was the best <laughs> that it was. Oh, we just do that with our lives sometimes. I'm going to make a resolution here or try this there or self-help book here. And all we do is like we do in that room if we change the furniture's position, all we do is walk through the room and stub our toe on a, on a misplaced table. But God, but God doesn't work like that. When God shows up and says, are you ready for the new? He doesn't rearrange or modify. He makes new. He makes something where there was nothing from nothing. Isaiah 41, God declares, I will make rivers flow on barren heights and springs within the valleys. I will turn the desert into pools of water and the parched ground into springs. Pause it right there. Rivers don't flow on heights. Rivers flow after the water has come down and they flow in low places. God says, I'm going to break the rules. I'm going to make rivers flow on the mountains. I will turn the desert into pools of water. Deserts aren't pools of water. Deserts are places of heat and dryness and barrenness. God's like, I'm going to break the rules because I make new. And here's why he does it. Next verse. So that people may see and know, may consider and understand. Nobody could do that except God. The hand of the Lord has done this. The Holy One of Israel has created it. So people could go, wait a minute. There's something different about you. What, what, what is it? How are you so different? Look different. There's a freshness. There's a light. There's a peace only God could have done it. It was a miracle of God. That's so vital to our knowledge of God, isn't it? It's so foundational no matter who we are. You know, the Bible is a wonderful, awesome book, the living Word of God, and it has 31,102 verses. 
But the first verse of them all speaks the most powerful foundational truth, that God is the creator with a capital C. Oh, and just, so you wanted, just in case you wanted to know, there's not even any lower C creators. We're just modifiers, uh, changers, uh, uh, rearrangers, but God's the only creator. He makes something out of nothing, and if we can't get that, then nothing else is ever going to make sense. God, I can't do it, but you can. God, there's nothing here, but you're able. We come to God and say, God, I need newness here or there. Maybe I need a total makeover. Lord, um, there's only one problem. I don't really, I'm not giving you really any material to work with. Everything's broken in pieces. God says, don't worry about it. And he tosses it all out and says, we're starting new. You're like, God, you're not working with any materials. He says, I speak things out of non-existence. I speak them into being. That's my business. I'm a creator. And when we get that from the beginning of our relationship with God, from our first verse, everything else makes sense. Trying to be new without God is like, well, it's like wearing a mask that tries to cover the real me. In Jesus' day, a, a popular form of entertainment was the Greek actors on stage. Now, they didn't have a huge cast. Usually, they just have somewhere like five or six actors putting on a large-scale play with many actors, but this is what they'd do. They'd, they'd appear on stage wearing a mask, and then they'd go backstage and appear on stage with a different mask to represent a different actor. And all the people knew, no matter what mask they were wearing, who they really were, but in order to play the part, they put on a mask. We can put on a mask sometimes at church and put on a mask in front of our spouse or our kids or at work, but God knows the real us. He knows, mask or no mask, that we need a newness from the inside out. Recently, I was listening to the testimony of a, of a comedian who came to Jesus. This was a, a few decades ago, and his story went like this. He said, he said I was a comedian traveling the country doing my act in nightclubs and places and wherever I could and was, was fairly su successful in what he did. He enjoyed what he did, successful. But he said, for all the happiness and the laughter that I portrayed and put on and made people laugh, he said, I was a mess. He said, the real me at home was dealing with alcohol, severe alcoholism that I had grown up with in my family. He said, and because of that, and because of the conflict in my marriage, he said, I had a severe anger problem. He said, I would yell at my, at my wife until she cowered. He said, I would yell in front of my kids. He said, I, it, it, was, it was a mess. He said, I was so angry, and I didn't even know why I was angry. I, I didn't even know why. I was doing okay. But he said, my, my reactions and the way I just treated life was wrecking my marriage. It was wrecking my finances. And he said... I kept trying to search for answers, but the more I searched, the less I found. And he said, my anger turned to something even worse. He said, it turned to apathy. He said, I didn't care anymore. He said, I reached the point where I was about to lose my marriage, lose my house, lose my career. And my wife looked at me and said, don't you even care? And he said, I looked at her and he said, in all honest truth, I looked at her and said, I don't care. I don't even care anymore. I've, I'm done. He said, life has lost all meaning, all meaning. In the course of his travels, he met a guy on a golf course one day and conversation turned to deeper talk and the guy said, I think you're searching and I think I have your answer. He's like, what? He said, it's found in God's word, the Bible. God has your answer. Right away, this comedian who, who was a self-proclaimed atheist said, no, 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 no. <laughs> that's silly. That's old. That's for morons. The guy's like, well, can I do something? He said, the church I attend, can I send you... This was back in the days of cassette tapes. He said, can I send you cassette tapes of the preacher there? The, the comedian said, how much will it cost me? He said, nothing. I'll just send it to you for free. He said, all right, then send me as much as you want. He said every, every week he'd get a, a new cassette tape and a package in the mail. He'd look at it, toss it in the corner of his, of his, of his junk room in the house, toss it in the corner. Toss, he said months went by. He'd get the tape, toss it, toss it. He said, to this day, I don't know why I didn't just throw it out just tossed it, and it was a pile of tapes. He said, one day my wife said to me, what are you going to do with that pile? You, throw it out if you're not going to listen to it. And so he said he was picking it up, about to throw it out, and he said, why not just listen to one? He just reached his hand in the middle, grabbed out one. In the midst of his hopeless, despairing, meaningless life, 
he ripped it open, looked it out, and it said, a sermon on the book of Ecclesi Ecclesi Ecclesiastes? He said he stuck it in there, and the, he said, the preacher said, I want to talk to you today about a meaningless life. And he read it from Ecclesiastes chapter 1. He said, listen to what the Bible says, a life without God is meaningless, meaningless, everything is meaningless. And this man says, he said, if there would have been any other verse in the Bible out of the 31,000 verses, I would have shut it off and turned it away. He said, but right away the living word of God struck me. And I went, somebody knows how I'm feeling. Somebody knows, somebody gets me. And his heart started to melt. And he listened to the next tape and the next tape and the next tape and said, something's going on here. And by the end of his journey, he had found Jesus. Because only God can make us new. Only God knows that happiness and joy and newness, if it was just an act of our will, we'd all be happy. But it's a God-shaped hole that only God can fill. Only God can make new. When we get that God is the creator, everything else starts to fall into place. Only God can make new. Well, let's get excited now. Number two, what things does God give us? What new things does God give us? What does he make new? What does he change in our lives? What does he promise to do for us when we come to him? Second Corinthians says this bold truth. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. And then it furthers that. It says now, in this new creation, old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. This is what God changes when we come to him. He changes me. Somebody receives Jesus and they run out into the parking lot hoping to find a new car. No, it's not how it works. They hope to, to get a, a letter in the mail. You have won a new house. You have, <laughs> you have a, a new this, a new, a new car, a new home. No, no. Same face in the mirror. Same job, same school to go to, but I've changed. Me, then I'm different. God does these things inside of us. What is exactly does the Bible say is new? Let's go through some of those things. God says he gives us new birth. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he's given us new birth into a living hope. It's a fresh start. Our spirit, which was dead inside of us, has come alive, the old sins are washed away, and God says, now you have a relationship with me. Now you are a, a baby that has had a fresh start, that is new, that skin is clean, that, that, that the guilt is gone, the sins are washed away, you have been born again. Wow. God gives us a new name and identity. The word of the Lord says, you shall be called by a new name, which, which the mouth of the Lord will name. You shall be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord. People put a lot of tags on us, a lot of names, loser, idiot, no good, never amount to nothing. And we get, eventually get to the place that we give ourselves that name. I'm unloved. I, I'm worth nothing. I can't do this. God says, time for a new name. You are my people. You are my loved ones. You are the apple of my eye. We go, God, God, he says, babies don't name themselves. The father names them. So I'm going to put my name on you. And anytime you're doubting it, go to my word and look again. It's right there, written down. It's the name that I write down, my name for you. Oh, how about a new heart? I will give you a new heart, God says. I will put a new spirit within you. I'll take out that old heart of stone. It can't even be changed, so let's just get rid of it and give you a soft heart of flesh. <laughs> we can put on a mask by changing our outfits, our hairstyles. We can do Botox or plastic surgery and to look younger. Now, all, all those things have their place, but something we have no power to renew is our heart. People can change every single thing on the outside, and their heart still feels the same. I still feel guilty. I went to a class that told me that God doesn't exist and guilt doesn't exist, but I still feel guilty. I don't understand it. I even feel worse now because I've tried and nothing's working. And God comes along and says, I deal in the business of new hearts. You know, I've asked God for this in my life. God, in this area with this person, in this relationship, I'm doing all the right things, I think, but my heart's just lagging along a mile behind. Lord, help me. 
renew me. Take away the hardness and give me a fresh heart toward this. And God says, done. That's my business. God also gives us a new citizenship. Ephesians 2.19, you are no longer foreigners and strangers when it comes to God, but you are now fellow citizens with God's people and members of his household. Oh, we have earthly citizenship and with it comes the privileges and protections of that government and nation. But now Jesus comes along and says, now you're a citizen of heaven as well. Now you have all the privileges, all the protections of being a member of my household, of having your name written in heaven. Now, Jesus says, you are no longer of earth, but now you are of heaven. And one day when you arrive at those gates, I'll say, Jesus says, I'll say, hey, you're a citizen here. Come on in. You don't need to prove anything or wait. Come on in. Come on, because we are citizens of heaven. Oh, and I like this final one. God has given us a new song. He put a new song in my mouth. A hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. I was on a date with Sister Emily in the coffee shop recently. Yes, married couples can still go on dates. Yes, they can. The romance doesn't end once you put on the ring. Come on. It's just getting started. And so I was on a date with Emily in the coffee shop recently, and um, we were just spending time together talking and connecting. And, and overhead, they had some music playing, which <clears throat> was not enjoyable uh, at all. It was songs of the world. And, you know, we just stopped for a minute and just listened. They were songs of despair, songs of, of loss, songs of heartbreak. I left him because he cheated on me, and I'll get back at him, and you'll do this, and you'll do this, this. We sat there for a minute, and we went, old songs, who listens to them? What is going on? I mean, it might have a beat to it, and it might have a tune, and the, the singer might be talented, but the anthems of this world are not a source of joy. Thank God that he says those songs are done, even our own songs of woe is me. God says, I got a new song for you, a hymn of praise unto our God, a song of thanks, a song of joy, a song of heaven, a song of hope. Maybe you're walking through your day and God just is going to put a new song in your lips. Or maybe it's a song we sang this morning as Rachel led us. But God says, I want you to be singing my praise because I've made all things new. Only God can make us new. Only God can give us a new name, birth, identity, song, citizenship. But I'm going to end with this point this morning. You and I must walk in newness of life. These gifts from God unearned and undeserved, but God will not give us new life and then grab us by the collar and say, now that I've given it to you, now let's go and drag us along. And we're like, oh, okay, okay, no, that's not how God does. There's a part we need to play. Oh, you're getting baptized today. This is an exciting day. It's a, oh, what a gift from God that we can proclaim the new life he's given us. But the real joy is going to come tomorrow morning when you say, I'm a child of God. He put a new song in my mouth. I'm ready to walk into my school, my workplace, my extended family, and walk in that newness of life. Romans 6, 4. Therefore, we were buried with him, that's Jesus, through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. Anybody celebrate that truth recently? Yes. Even so, we also... Just like Christ was raised, so we also, ah, should walk in newness of life. To walk means forward movement. To have new life in Jesus implies that I'm not staying where I am, but I'm walking in newness. It means that I've truly understood what it means to receive his work on the cross and from the empty tomb. Did you know that there are just three options in your walk with Jesus? Just three. Really, everything could be boiled down to these three. The first is this, to go backwards to death. You make the decision in Jesus, and then life gets tough. Things don't work out the way you want it, and you're like, forget it, and you drift backwards to death. Peter wrote about it in his book, and he said this. He said, you know what that's like? That's like a dog going back to the food it just vomited up. 
we all go, oh, stop it. Get away from there, Rover. Get away. That's disgusting. You don't eat your own vomit. God says that's what it's like spiritually when we go back to the things that we got rid of that were making us sick. We got rid of them. I'm done. Hey, they kind of look good. God says, no, they're not. They're full of poison. Don't go back. That's an option. It's our option. Are we going to go back to death? Oh, here's, here's, we're going to jump to option number three. Or we could go forward to life. Yes. Oh, this is what God intends for us to take steps of faith, trusting him, saying, Lord, I'm going to obey you in this. Oh, you, Lord, you spoke to me in today's sermon. I'm going to do this. Yes, I will. I'm going forward. I'm further in Jesus today than I was yesterday, and I'm believing tomorrow I'll be further again. But wait, there's an option number two. It's this, to be alive, but stay in the tomb. Imagine with me the ladies on Easter morning. They're coming to the tomb sorrowful, expecting to find a dead Jesus, and there's the angel sitting on the stone. Ladies, do not sorrow. Jesus is not dead. He is alive. <gasps> oh, oh this one. where is he? He is here. He is in the tomb. You may see him. Oh, wow, okay. Can we go in? Go on in. They walk into the tomb. There's Jesus sitting on the bench on the corner. Come in. Shh, shh. Whoa. What is it, Jesus? Shh, shh, shh. I don't want anyone to know I'm alive. Shh, shh, shh. We're keeping this a secret, okay? Jesus, what is it? What's going on? I, I, it's too scary out there. What if they crucify me again? What if something happens? It's better in here. Wait, wait, Jesus. Are we seeing a vision? Are you alive? I'm alive. Touch my hands. Touch my side. Give me something to eat. I'm alive. But I'm staying in the tomb. Jesus would have never done that. Jesus said, the tomb? Oh, no, no. I'm done. Hey, angel, that, that stone is rolled away, and I am walking out, walking out into newness of life. Amen. That's our testimony. You should have old friends coming looking for you. Walking up, expecting to find the old you. This should be the answer. Sorry, I'm not back there anymore. Oh, so you just kind of just stay. No, no, no. I'm already a mile ahead in Jesus. Thank you very much. As Christians, we should walk like the risen Jesus. Look at Romans 6, 4 again. We just read it. As Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we, we also should walk in newness of life. You think Jesus did this coming out of the tomb? No, no. We know what Jesus did. He walked out with a boldness, with an invincibility, with the Spirit of God upon him, walking with a newness that said, I have an authority right now to walk. I am more than a conqueror, and through Jesus we are. As we close today, and Justin comes to the piano, before we prepare to baptize these, these precious ones. You might be here and be saying this, Pastor Josh, I, I get everything, but I got to be honest with you, I am scared. I'm scared to walk in that path of God's way. I'm scared because I read in the Bible it says that God's path is a narrow path and the path of the world just seems so wide. It just seems so much easier. There's just such a the Bible does describe it like that. It says to follow Jesus to walk, is to walk on that narrow path. Can't do what we want, say what we want. Do, no, it is a narrow path. But there's one key difference between the two paths. And here's the difference. On the broad path of the world, I'm on my own. I got to make things new on my own. That's not going to happen. I get tagged by others. I, I, I lose my footing. I fall down. There's no one there to help. But on the narrow path, though it is narrow, I got a friend. I got an example. I got somebody who said, because I have risen, now you are risen with me. He's holding my hand. He's leading me. He's guiding me. He's comforting me. He's providing for me. On the narrow path, the one key difference is you are not alone. And as Jesus gives us newness, he doesn't raise us up from the grave, raise you up from the baptismal tank and go, see you in heaven, you're on your own now. He says, let's go together. Jesus spoke this as we close in John 8, verse 12. He spoke again to the people and said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life.
the light of newness, the light of day, walking with Jesus. Oh, no, it may not be easy. It may be an uphill climb from time to time, but you have one who is holding your hand. You have one who will lift you if necessary. You have one who will never leave you or forsake you as you trust in him. Let's pray as we close. Jesus, we celebrated Easter. We celebrated you rising again. And Lord, today we are reminded that one of the most amazing reasons you did that was so that we could say, hey, Jesus, you showed me, you enabled me, you, you, you set the example of how I as well can leave the old behind and rise in newness of life. Oh, Jesus, by your spirit, do that work in me. And so today, before we proceed with the rest of the exciting part of the service, I'm going to ask you this question. Are you here today searching? Are you here today saying, I, I, I want that new, new life. I'm scared. I don't know. I, 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 but I want it. Something's stirring inside of me. And if that's you, if you want to start that relationship with God and you want Him to make you new, I want you to know this, that it's no effort on your part that's going to do that. It is just you acknowledging, God, I can't do it. I'm full of guilt and shame and hopelessness on my own. But Lord, you've stirred some hope in me today that you are able through the death and resurrection of Jesus to make me new. If that's your desire, with everyone else praying and heads bowed across this place, if that's your desire to start a new life in Jesus, I just want you to stand where you're at. Maybe you're online. Stand where you're at and even use that, that button in the reply box to say, I'm ready. Thank you. Remain standing, if you will. Or there's others who will, who will join these ones standing as everyone else just remains praying. Jesus. Jesus. Yes, Lord. As I pray, if you, you just want to make a bold step and stand with these ones standing, you can do that. Lord, I thank you that you made the first move when we weren't thinking about you, we were living for self, you made the first move. You died for me. You, you loved me. And now, today, Lord, you've made the move in extending that invitation to us. Lord, these ones standing, all they do is just basically say, yes, Jesus. Help me. Help me, Lord. Help me. I can't do it. But Lord, through your forgiveness and through your power, Lord, you're going to make me new. Make them new, Lord. Make them new. I'm praying for them today. May they believe in you as their answer, their creator and Lord, the one who forgives their sins and gives them a fresh start. Bless them, Lord Jesus. Those standing may be seated. And Lord, today we, we just together as a group rejoice in your, in your creative, wonderful, renewing power. Oh Lord, you're not done working on us yet. Continue to make us new as we trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Pastor, would you come up? Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor Josh. Always a good message, but today so perfect for, what's, for everything from A to Z. Amen. After Easter, water baptism, everything. Well, we've come to the time in the service where we want to introduce to you what we call the candidates for baptism. And so those of you who you sat through the class, you got the t-shirt, you're ready to do that, that thing where you show the world who the new savior is in your life, would you please come forward? Come on and just stand right up here for me. Just stand right up here. That's good, Ken. Hey, there you go, man. That's cool. All right. I like this. This is interesting. You know, I didn't notice this before, but these these are all young adults. Uh, you know, these these are.
These are uh, high school, college, and, and early career. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm glad for that. Well, maybe you, maybe you know this, maybe you don't, but water baptism is an outward sign. It's a, it's a ceremony, as it were, but it simply says to the world, look what has been accomplished on the inside of my heart. I want to show on the outside of my life. And so they will walk down into baptism waters. They will be buried with Jesus, as the Bible says, and come out. But they don't become a Christian today. They became a Christian the day they asked Jesus to come into their heart. So if you say to yourself, how do I give my life to God? It's when you ask Jesus to come into your heart. So praise the Lord. In just a moment, we're going to invite them to walk up on the sides. Pastor Josh, do you feel like you're ready? Yeah, okay, why don't you, all the guys go that way, all the girls go this way. Okay, very good, very good. While they're getting set, let me deal with just one thing going on in the world today. Where were you this week when you got all shook up? What, you're in your house, you're where, you know, I'm standing in the church and first I thought it was thunder and, and, and then, and then I said, no, that's too, too, and then I thought, the furnace blew up, and, and so I ran downstairs and finally figured out it was an earthquake. You know, tomorrow also, the sun and the moon are going to, you know, coincide, you know, and things are going to get dark for a few minutes and everything else. And some people might say, and I'm not saying it isn't, but some people might say, oh man, so many signs going on, the war in Ukraine, the war with Israel and Gaza, and all the different things that are happening in the world. And yes, uh, they can be signs. I don't know that they are, but they can be signs that draw us to repentance. But I want to give you one verse, just as Pastor Josh gets set up up there, one verse that really should draw us to turn from our sins. It shouldn't necessarily be an eclipse or an earthquake or a, a war, even though Jesus said in the last days things like this will happen that should mark and should cause us to highlight that he is coming soon. But the Bible says in Romans 2, 4, don't you see how wonderfully kind, tolerant, and patient God is with you? Does this mean nothing to you? Can't you see his kindness is intended to turn you from your sin? Why should we come to Jesus? Why should we come to him through in Jesus Christ? Because he is so kind. He is so wonderful. Give your heart to Jesus, just like these have here in this uh, water baptism tank. And so there he is. Let's welcome our water baptismal candidates. Praise the Lord. Amen. Listen, what a joy. What a joy for uh, each of these um, candidates to be doing this step. But you know, we could have just done it this afternoon with an empty sanctuary pastor. We could have tried that, but that wouldn't have been God's way. God wanted each one of you here rejoicing with them, acknowledging their decision, clapping for them, rejoicing, because the Bible says that when, when one person turns to Jesus in heaven, all the angels rejoice. And, and the Bible says there are, there are millions and millions of angels, so let's join with heaven rejoicing in each one. I'm going to ask them to come in the tank, ask them if they want to say any brief words of testimony, and then um, acknowledge their commitment before you and before the Lord in the step of baptism. All right, let's start today with, with Ken. Ken. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, first, I want to thank God for his mercy and goodness over my life. And I want to thank Julia and Dad for introducing me to Christ. And I also want to thank Pastor Josh and Pastor B for teaching the Word of God and for the opportunity today to get baptized. Uh, this church is where I gave my heart to the Lord. And I'm just feel blessed waking up every day knowing that I have Jesus Christ in my heart. So Ken, I'm going to ask you two questions. All right? They may sound basic, but they're life-changing questions. Number one, you even said it. Have you acknowledged Jesus as your Savior and Lord? Yes. Yes. And now, 
Are you committed to following him and walking in newness each day? I do. Yes. Then, with that confession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is Iris. Iris is coming down. I just want to start first and foremost by thanking my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for never turning away, no matter how far I ran. And I want to thank my family and my father for being here and always having my back. And I want to thank David West for telling me a long time ago to stay in the light and doing everything he can to protect myself and the other youth that have grown up here. And I've been gone for a really long time trying to find my own way and it is when I finally stopped and listened for God that he told me that he just wanted me to come back home. <laughs> Those are beautiful words, Iris. Oh, that we could just package them and hold them in our heart, right? Because that's so, so true. God just wants us to come back to him. So, have you received Jesus as your Savior and Lord? Yes. Yes. And are you committed to walking with him in this new way? Yes. yes. All right. Then upon your confession of faith, I baptize you in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And now we have Caleb Miggins. You're gonna say it right here. Caleb said he's he's not gonna say anything, but but I'll tell you what. This is a faithful guy that's at church every time the doors are open. He and his mom and his family have been coming, and and when the invitation from Pastor went out, he said, "I'm ready. I'm signing up. I've I've made the choice to follow Jesus." So. Do you face this way and put your hands like this across your chest? Caleb, I'm going to ask you these two questions. I know you're still, you're still young by maybe some ways of the world, but if you know these answers, it can change your life. Have you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Yes. And are you committed to following Him for the rest of your life? Yes. Amen. Then with that confession of faith, Caleb, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Somaya, Somaya. So Somaya is not going to speak, but um, but I know there are many that if they could would come up here and speak um, for her and with her because she and her family have been have been coming to church now for for several years. Um, what a testimony her mom and dad have! How God came and and saved them, renewed their their marriage. Uh, and gave them a fresh start and now they're passing on that heritage of faith to their to their daughters and their son so put your hands like this i'm going to ask you these two questions have you received jesus as your savior and lord yes yes and are you committed to following him each day of your life yes. all right then on that step of faith believing in your heart confessing with your mouth i baptize you in the name of the father son and holy spirit <laughs> This is Chibukem. Are you going to speak? No? Suddenly, I feel very small. Uh, again, a, a heritage of faith with, with um, uh, his, his mom and dad and family coming to church. But, but uh, you know, despite mom and dad's faith, it's got to be a, a personal decision from each person, right? God doesn't have any grandchildren uh, that just are grandfathered in into the faith. No, each one must make their own decision of faith. So we're so glad that Chibukem has made that decision. Stand this way. Place your hands over your chest. 
Have you made the decision to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord? Yes. Yes. And are you committed to following Him each day of your life, no matter how long you live? Yes. Amen. Then, upon the confession of your faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And this is Haley. Okay, so I'm not much of a public speaker, so bear with me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> try not to cry. You see, I didn't have the blessing of growing up in a Christian family. I, I grew up with amazing parents, but there's, there was always something missing. My life before Jesus was just so horrible. I was in such a dark, dark place. And if I'm being honest, part of me didn't even think I'd make it this far in life. And that just shows you how far lost I was. I will say this, though. No matter how far gone or lost you might feel, it is never too late to call out to him. He sees your pain. God wants to heal you, and he wants to restore you. <clears throat> God has blessed my life immensely in so many ways, one of the main ways being whew, sending me my answered prayer, the best friend I always needed. If it wasn't for Brandon, I wouldn't have found Calvary. I wouldn't be here today. He was the only one who knew what I was going through and never gave up on me. Even after a few failed attempts, he never stopped inviting me to church. He would call me just to pray for me, and at church he introduced me to his amazing family, especially his amazing sisters and brothers, and all of you guys. Thank you all for being so amazing. It's a blessing to be a part of this church. That is why I am here today, declaring my faith. God changed my life. He gave me a second chance, and he can do the same for you. Glory be to God. All right, so Haley, I'm going to ask you a couple questions. These are important. Mm -hmm. Have you received Jesus as your Savior and your Lord? Yes. yes. And now are you committed to walking with Him? He's pulled you, like you said, out of darkness, and now are you going to walk with Him in light? Always and forever. Always and forever, she says. All right. Then upon the confession of your faith, I'm going to baptize you today in front of these people in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay, all right. And this is Chibuzor. Hi, good morning. Um, I just want to thank first my parents for introducing me to this church and taking me at a young age. I'm very grateful and I've gotten to know a lot of people who have helped me to grow in Christ. I also want to thank the church and the pastors and all my Sunday school teachers who have taught me as well. And finally, I want to thank Jesus for being my Lord and Savior and for being my rock whenever I doubted myself. He has never let me down and he has carried me through all my struggles when I'm overwhelmed, when I'm anxious. So I'm very grateful. So yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, Chibazor. So we've heard your words, your gratefulness, right? It's so good to be in this tank and just have a grateful heart for all God has done. But in front of these people, do you acknowledge that you've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes. And are you committed, purposing to walk with him every day? Yes. yes. Then upon that confession of faith, I baptize you today in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All right, we've just got two more this morning. Hadassah. I, I just want to thank my parents for helping me grow up in the Christian household and allowing me to like be nurtured in, in the care of God. And thank you for Mr. Robert and Miss Maria for inviting us to this church. And yeah, that's it. That's right. 
yeah, just thank you for those words, Hadassah. So just to add, you know, to that, it, um, this is a neighbor of a of an, a family who's a, who's a neighbor of someone who's been coming to Calvary for a long time, and they just said, hey, just we're inviting you, right? We're not dragging you here or guilting you into coming, but just inviting you. Um, may, may we all have that heart that says, hey, those that God has placed around me in my work, my neighborhood, my school, maybe God has placed them there so I can invite them. And so what, what a wonderful testimony. Amen. Place your hands like this. So have you accepted Jesus as your Savior and Lord? Yes. Yes. And are you committed to walking with him each day? Yes. Yes. Then, upon that confession of faith in front of these witnesses, I baptize you, Hadassah, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All right, last one. All right, this is Michael. Take your time. Take your time. You got friends here? You got friends and family? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Hi, my name is uh, Michael, um, and, and I want to say that for, for so long, um, I, I've struggled with pain, I've struggled with loss, and, I, and I've struggled with, with just feeling so alone. And, and that's truly, truly a sad thing, because I, I've come not just to the realization today, but in, in the past days, that that's not the case, that I'm not alone. I, I look into the crowd and I see a bunch of wonderful, amazing people. I, I was lucky enough to have my family, my wrestling team, and extended family. And, and that means everything to me. I, for so long, you know, I thought I was clever and, you know, I tried to change the world. It's, it's through God that I've gained the wisdom to realize that I have to change myself. Thank you. All right, Michael, place your hands like this. So, so in front of these people, and you said many fr friends, family, wrestling team, do you unashamedly say that you've received Jesus as your Savior and Lord? Yes, I do. Yes. And are you committed to walking with Him throughout the rest of your life? Forever and always. Forever and always. All right, then, upon that confession of faith, I baptize you, Michael, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Before we pray, each one of you, every single one of you has a job. You've got to think of a way to encourage one or more of these that were baptized today. Maybe it's today, you see them in the lobby, or maybe it's next week, or in a couple weeks, but find a way to encourage them. Tell them you're proud of them, you're praying for them, and do it. Find a way to stand beside them in their faith. Would you stand with me as we pray? Lord Jesus, we thank you. Lord, we are present for this celebration, this, this, this ceremony of, of outward, unashamed faith. Jesus, we thank you that you are present as well. You are rejoicing for these ones, these young ones, this younger generation, Lord, is rising up to say, I have decided to follow Jesus. Lord, help them not only today, but tomorrow and the rest of this week and year and life as they walk with you. We thank you for all you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you today. Go in God.